In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix wrist pain for good at home. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Dr. Rowe coming to you from Spine Care in St. Joseph, Michigan. So if you're dealing with wrist pain from gaming, computer use, driving, everyday life, this is a video that you'll probably want to check out. I'm going to break this down into a very easy step-by-step -step guide that you can do at home. They're going to focus on different parts that all work together. So if you're looking to get the best results, go through all parts and take what is most effective at getting rid of your wrist pain. So with that being said, let's get started. In the first part, we're going to focus on a big cause of wrist pain, which is soft tissue tightness. This technique is called muscle scraping or gua sha, and it might become your new favorite thing because it can give quick results, even in as little as 30 seconds. We need two things, the first being a large metal spoon. We want one that's a little bit thicker and more round, you'll get better results. The second being a form of lubrication. I'm going to be using coconut oil, but you can use any massage lotions or over-the-counter pain creams, such as Icy Hot or Biofreeze. Start off by putting this pretty much from the fingertips all the way up to the elbow. Go all the way from the hands inwards, outwards, coat the whole area. And when it comes to lubrication, you want a little bit more because you'll have a little bit less friction and this will be more comfortable. I'm just going to take my hand and I'm just going to place the arm on an elevated flat surface. Edge of a bed, countertop, desk, it all works. You just want it nice and relaxed. Let's take our spoon and start above the wrist. When you do this, you only want to do soft tissues, things that you can grab like this. You don't want to go over any bony spots because it can cause irritation causing discomfort. So let's take the spoon, and it doesn't matter if you use the rounded or the handle, I'm just going to angle it at about 45 degrees, and then I'm just going to work my way from the wrist all the way up to the elbow, putting enough pressure in there to get a nice self-massage but not causing discomfort. But you want to do this nice and slowly for about 12 repetitions. When you do this too, you're going to find that one spot might feel gritty. That's usually a spot of adhesion, and you want to throw more repetitions in there to help break that up. You'll also notice that it'll start to form red pockets on top. That's blood flow coming into the area to help promote healing. So once I've done that, what I'll do from there is then attack it at a different angle. And it doesn't matter what angle that you take it at. You can experiment with it, do what is the most effective. But you can go down, you can go at just circular motions if you want, it all works. From there, what I want to do is go through the wrist motions to activate these muscles to get better results. So I'm going to go into wrist flexion, I'm going to go into extension, and then I'm going to go into what is known as ulnar and radial deviations. So that's pretty much just taking the wrist in and out. Do the same thing during these motions right here, and if one spot feels achy or more tight while you do it, focus on that and really work that out to hopefully improve your wrist motion and lead to less pain. So once we've done this whole area, let's turn the hand over like this and do a hitchhiker sign. And then just repeat on the muscles in here. Make sure to go through all the wrist motions again and attack the spots that need it just a little bit more. Then we can turn the hand over just like this and do the same thing with the wrist motions. With this also, you want to make sure to go very lightly over this area because this is where the carpal tunnel forms. To find the carpal tunnel, just make a fist like this and move the wrist up and down. You'll notice that there's a band that forms. If you trace this, that will go right into the carpal tunnel. So go very lightly over this area. But you also want to focus on this part of the palm right here. So what I like to do is go over the meaty portions attack it at different angles and go with what feels the most effective. Imagine that you have an imaginary uh, ball in your hand too. Do some squeezing motions with it and do the same thing. Actually, I'm going to take a different part of the spoon right here. And you're more than welcome to do that too. Just experiment with different parts of the spoon and go with what works best for you. But you want to do the same thing and try to get this all nice and loosened up. From there, I just bend the elbow like this and make sure to go on this part of the arm too and go through the wrist motions. And I hope all of this together allows this to just move a lot more freely and have a lot less wrist pain. It's a great technique and it can give very quick results. So another big cause of wrist pain is because we have lack of mobility in the muscles, the joint itself. Here are some great stretching exercises that you can pretty much do anywhere, at home or at work. We just need a flat elevated surface such as a desk 
or a countertop. Let's take the wrist that we're focusing on, take the palm, place it flat on that surface. Keep the elbow on that side as straight as possible while doing this exercise. You're also going to want to keep the hand flat. Don't lift it up during this. If you feel like it is lifting up, just take a fist on the other side and press down into it or just use the other hand flat like this. So what I'm going to do is use my body weight to be able to do this stretch. Keeping the elbow straight, my finger straight ahead of me, I'm going to lean into it just like this keeping the palm down. When you do this, you're going to feel the muscles on the back side of the arm here really start to fire. So lean into it as much as you feel comfortable. Once we hit that comfortable stretch, hold this one for 10 to 15 seconds. Come back, take a breather, and then repeat this one three to five times. With each repetition, go a little bit further with it to help stretch those out even more. From there, what I'd like to do is go into a dynamic stretch. So I'm going to go in more of like a 360 stretch to target muscles just a little bit differently. I lift my hand up like this and I go clockwise with it. And then I just lower it back down. And then I lift it up and then I keep going further and further with it. What you're going to notice, the muscles in the arm and the wrist get hit just a little bit differently. So challenge yourself to try to drive these fingers back as much as you can while keeping this elbow straight. Once you hit a point where it feels like it's very tight or achy, try to hold this position for about 10 to 15 seconds. You can relax and then try to build into it even more. It's just going to help stretch those out even further to hopefully give more pain relief. Once you're done with that, come back and then do it in a counterclockwise fashion, repeating the same method. What we want to do from there is turn our hand over to the point where the palm is now going to be facing up towards the ceiling. And then I just repeat that. What I do is I try to keep the elbow straight and I'm going to keep the palm down as much as I can and I'm going to lean forward. This is going to hit the muscles again just a little bit differently. So only go to your comfort level. Do this one for three to five repetitions, holding for 10 to 15 seconds and challenge yourself each time to take it a little bit further to get more muscle release and hopefully a lot less wrist pain. So another big cause of wrist pain is because we put it in bad positions like typing all day long, driving, gaming, that just jams up the joints itself. So we're going to focus on two carpal bones, the lunate and the scaphoid, which are commonly associated with carpal tunnel syndrome. To find the carpal tunnel, just make a fist, bring the wrist back like this, and then trace that line right there all the way down. This is where the carpal tunnel forms. Then you have a nerve known as the median nerve that travels to these three fingers. That's why carpal tunnel syndrome is generally felt right through here. Here's a great self-mobilization or self-release to get these bones moving and hopefully have uh, a lot less wrist pain in the future from those activities. So what I'm going to do is start off right where the carpal tunnel forms, flip the hand over, and go straight to the top you're going to feel a divot or a hole right here. This is where the lunate tends to hang out. It should feel just like, yeah, a big hole. What I'm going to do from there is take my hand and I'm going to stabilize the bottom right over the carpal tunnel right there, and then I'm going to place my thumb directly over that hole. Let's pinch into it just like this to create a good stabilization point. From there, rock the wrist back and forth. When you do this, it should feel like a pebble is rolling around or a clunking motion is happening. At that point, you know you have a very good contact over the lunate. Once we are able to find that, and if you're not able to find it right away, just move your thumb over to different spots around that hole until you finally are able to get a good contact point. But from there, what I'm going to do is the self-mobilization. And this is very easy. The movement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distract or pull at the wrist, bring the wrist up a little bit, and then from there, I'm going to whip into it by pretty much bringing the fingers down here downwards and the thumb pressing into it almost like a lever. So watch how I do this. I'm going to pull, distract from there, bring the wrist up like this, and then I'm going to simply whip into the wrist itself. And if that lunate is out of place and ready to go, you'll feel it almost clunk right back in like a big popping sensation. But don't try to force this one. Just go in there and put a little bit of motion in there until you feel that it just clunks. From there, go through the wrist motion. See how much uh, restriction you're having. Maybe you're having immediate uh, pain relief. That would be great too. But once we're able to get the lunate where it needs to be, let's go over to the scaphoid. So the scaphoid, if we trace from the lunate, will go a little bit more towards the thumb right here. Same thing with this. I just put my hands at the bottom to stabilize. My thumb is going to go over that spot. I'm going to put the uh, wrist into 
just kind of a whipping motion like this until I feel that clunking motion. Once we find that, we know that we're over the scaphoid itself. From there, same movement. I'm going to distract by pulling, and then I'm going to bring the wrist up like this, and then just kind of whip into it until I feel that scaphoid clunk forward, and at that point, release, and hopefully give you a lot of pain relief and a lot more motion into the wrist. So one of the best ways to get rid of wrist pain for good is to strengthen everything in and around the wrist. I'm going to be doing what is known as the stick method. I think it's one of the most fun ways to go about doing it, but it's also going to put the wrist in every single motion and really focus on strengthening all the muscles in and around the wrist. We just need something long and sturdy. I'm going to be using my beat up broomstick for this. You can use a PVC pipe or just go out in the yard and grab a stick. Let's start off with radial deviation. What I'm going to do is put the stick in front of me and I'm going to grab an end. It's going to be hardest if you grab all the way at the end of that stick. If this is too hard, slide your hand down and take a smaller portion of that stick. It will be a lot easier. You just want to experiment with it. The more that you put the stick out in front of you, the more challenging this exercise will be. So find that so-called sweet spot. But let's put the stick out in front of us just like this. And what I'm going to do is just raise the stick up towards the ceiling as much as I can. The more that you lift it up, the more it's going to activate muscles into the forearm down into the wrist. Only go to your comfort level. Once we hit that point, try to hold this for 15 to 20 seconds. From there, I'm just going to lower it down very slowly to the point it takes me about five to 10 seconds till the tip touches the floor. From there, just repeat this up to three to five times, challenging yourself to really drive that stick up as much as you can. Next, let's do ulnar deviation. It's very similar to the first one, but we're just going to place the stick behind us and then we're going to raise it up just like this. Again, 15 to 20 second holds all the way up towards the top and then take about five to 10 seconds to go all the way down. Try to do that one up to five repetitions. For the next one, we're going to do more rotation, a pronation and a supination into the wrist. And I always feel like I'm training for a lightsaber battle with this one, so it's a little bit fun. Let's just place the stick out in front of us. The tip is going to be pointed up towards the ceiling. Elbow is going to be straight. I'm just going to rotate the stick inward like this as much as I can. And you want to do nice, slow, controlled movements. And go down as far as you're able to really challenge yourself. Once we hit that point, take about 10 seconds to come all the way back up. And you want to do this one for about three to five times. Just nice, slow, controlled movements. You can make it more challenging by uh, going just a little bit slower with it. From there, what we're going to do is just go on the other side and then repeat the same thing. Really just drive that down as much as you can and take some time coming back up. But you want to do this on both sides going in and out for about five complete repetitions. If you liked the video and got a lot of relief, please show us your support by giving this video a like and maybe subscribing to our channel too. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching.